Today we're going to read about two sisters waving bye-bye or um, campaigning for the ban of plastic. Melati and Isabel Wishson, the sisters waving bye-bye to plastic bags. Melati and Isabel grabbed their towels and sprinted from the house into the rice paddies. The path led them past fields of gleaming water and bright green shoots, then into the jungle. Birds called from the treetops and thickets of bamboo. Minutes later, they emerged onto the beach. There was no one around. Dropping their things on the sand, the sisters dashed to the water and threw themselves into the turquoise waves, whooping with joy. It was Saturday, so they had all morning to play. Isabel rolled onto her back while Melati started to swim across the bay. But Melati's heart suddenly sank when she saw plastic bottles, bags, and bits of plastic floating in the water. It was 2013. 12-year-old Melati Wishson and her 10-year-old sister Isabel were in the bay near their home in Bali. The island is one of 17,508 that make up the country of Indonesia and is hugely popular with holidaymakers. Recently, this tropical paradise had faced huge issues with plastic pollution. It was everywhere the girls went, piled on roadsides, blocking drains and clogging rivers, which then carried it into the sea. It was strewn across the beat on the beach when they hung out with friends. Indonesia is the world's second large biggest source of ocean plastic, after China. It is killing and endangering sea life and reaching people's dinner plate through the fish that eat it. The girls were upset and angry that their beautiful island home was being strangled by plastic. The girls always felt a deep connection to Bali's jungle, mountains, and sea. When they were small, their dad sparked their love of nature. He taught them to dance in the rain and paint their faces with mud and told them Indonesian tales about people in nature. They looked up to their mom too. She taught them to work hard, be kind, and do what they felt was right. The sisters were best friends, playing outside and building tree houses in the village, but developed different. Okay, we didn't want to wait until we were older to stand up for what we believe in, so we didn't. Interest. Melati was the quieter of the two and enjoyed reading and writing. Meanwhile, Isabel was more sociable with a passion for dancing, singing, and acting. Both loved going to Bali Screen School, where the teaching had a strong focus on the environment. It was their, their school that inspired the teach sisters to become youth activists. One morning, they had a lesson about people who had changed the world, including Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King Jr., and went home that day wondering what they could do to help their community. Then the answer struck them. Of course, they would try to solve the plastic pollution problem. They did some research and found that many countries have banned plastic bags. Why not Bali? The girls recruited six of their friends and started a campaign to ban plastic bags from the island and persuade people to stop littering. They named it Bye Bye Plastic Bags. The first thing the team did was set up an online petition asking the governor of Bali to support the ban. Within a day, they had 6,000 signatures, increasing over the following months to 77,000. To boost numbers, they went to Bali Airport, where they eventually persuaded the manager to allow them in to collect another 10,000 signatures. Alongside the petition, the friend set up an information booths in local markets and organized beach cleanups. Many other students started to join in, and the team who called themselves the Bye Bye Plastic Bags Crew, crew decided to work with a nearby village, Desca Pirinan, to show what a plastic bag free valley might look like. They talked to shopkeepers about the hazards of plastic waste and gave them weekly deliveries of bags made out of cotton to hand out instead of plastic bags, plastic ones. They also created an education booklet about plastic pollution for the primary school. After a year, the petition had nearly 90,000 signatures and Desa Pirinan village had reduced its plastic bags usage by 
over 60%. However, Bally's governor still had not responded to the sisters' request for a ban. In autumn 2014, on a trip to India, they visited the National Canteen Museum, where they learned about how he reached his goals for change in society by starting a hunger strike. Malathi and Isabel wondered whether they might stage their own version of this action. They decided to fast between sunrise and sunset to get publicity for their request. News of their protests spread quickly, and the next day the governor sent a car to collect the girls from school. After meeting them, he signed an agreement to work towards a plastic bag free Bali. The success of their petition had demonstrated that the people of Bali supported their campaign. Now the sisters wanted to involve businesses too, so they launched One Island, One Voice campaign. This invited shops, hotels, restaurants to publicly commit to reducing their own plastic use and to display the campaign sticker in their window. In June 2015, Bali's government announced that plastic bags would be banned by 2018, and that July, Bali Airport banned them too. The girls loved bringing, to get, loved bringing together young people and seeing them take action and make decisions for themselves. But they also enjoyed taking the lead. This meant being the ones to talk to the government staff, something they found difficult at first. And sometimes the sisters missed lessons to attend meetings about changing the laws in Bali relating to plastic bag use. For this, they started working with an environmental lawyer, Sarah Waddle. Their school supported them by allowing them time away as long as they kept up with their studies. From early on, the girls had found the most important skill was communicating well. They were regularly asked to speak at school and community events. But in September 2015, they were given the chance to bring their message to a much bigger audience when they were invited to give TED Talk in London about their campaign. They were excited and rehearsed many times, both together and alone in front of the mirror. The talk was a huge success. On returning from London, they were con contacted by young people from all over the world who had watched their talk and wanted to start their own Bye Bye Plastic Bags campaign. In Bali, their own crew had grown to over 30 young volunteers from across Bali. Based on their experiences, the team created a starter kit for the BBPB groups to use. Bye Bye Plastic Bags to use, groups to use. The youth campaign had gone global. In February 2017, the Bali crew organized the island's biggest ever beach cleanup, which attracted 12,000 people across 55 locations on the island and collected 43 tons of waste. Meanwhile, around their school lessons, the girls were still pushing the government to move their meet their commitment of banning plastic bags by the end of the year. Which they were frustrated to realize was now unlikely to happen. With the support of their lawyer, they demonstrated that the Bali government had the illegal powers to charge for plastic bags use, even though the government argued they needed Indonesian government to change the law first. The Bali government failed to ban plastic bags by the 2018 target. In fact, in January 2018, the pollution problem was so bad that the island declared a garbage emergency on its most popular tourist beaches. Here, sunbathers lie on golden sand strewn with food packaging and bags, while surfers bobbing behind the waves dodged waste flushed out from rivers and brought in by swirling currents. That month, officials employed 700 cleaners with 35 trucks to move remove up to 100 tons of debris each day to a nearby landfill site. The girls were deeply disappointed, but continued campaigning and started new green initiatives, including a project teaching school groups to make river booms, especially nets that trap plastic in a river and stop it washing out to sea. Finally, in December 2018, the Bali government announced that single-use plastic, including straws, bags, cups, bottles, and couplets, would be banned from the island on July 2019. After six years of campaigning, Malathi and Isabel were thrilled to finally have the result they've been working so hard for. And today, these plastic items 
cannot be used in Bali. The sisters have won many awards, including Time Magazine's 2019 Teens of the Year and Forbes Magazine Most Inspiring Women. Their TED Talk has been watched over 1.5 million in events all over the world and have even addressed world leaders. Today, Bye Bye Plastic Bags is a global youth-led movement with 45 teams from Mexico to Japan and Nigeria to the UK. The sisters have also begun to look for other ways to support their community. When they were campaigning against plastic bags, they were often asked questions. Christian, while helping women on the island, learned. Oh no, they were often asked question while helping women on. What what people could use instead? Malati had an idea for how to answer that question while helping women on the island learn new skills and earn money. After getting some donated sewing machines, they she set up a Mountain Mamas project to a hill village near her home. Here, women learn to sew bags using bags from newspapers and magazines. The women are paid for each bag they make, and the bags are sold through retailers all over Bali, with half the profits from each one going back to the village to pay for wealth, health, and education projects. Melati is now a full-time activist, having graduated from high school to a year early. A year early. Meanwhile, Isabel is working hard to finish her studies, and while still committed to her activism, she also dreams of future in dance and performance. Melati and Isabel has achieved her, their goal to protect their island from plastic, but now they have an even bigger mission, empowering young people to become change makers through a new project called Youthtopia. They think young people should start working now for the world they want to be part of. As they put it, young people may only be 25% of the population, but they are 100% of the future. These change-making sisters are living proof that you're never too young to take a stand and make a difference.